Hey everyone, I finally dropped the new version I've been promising you for so long. I showed most of the changes in the previous video, so make sure to check that one out if you missed it. In this video, I'll walk you through the setup process step by step and show you how to update your current projects to the new version. Let's get into it. First, head to your Gumroad library or Superhive orders page and download the new files. Depending on which pack you purchased, you'll see one of these files available. This is your main track tools library. For this video, I'll be working with the full version. You'll also want to download the asset browser link add-on, the track tools AC exporter, and the installation guide PDF. Even though I'm covering most of what's in that PDF in this video, it's still worth reading through in case I miss something. Now let's extract the main track tools file. Grab the zip file and extract it somewhere on your main drive, just not your desktop or downloads folder. You want this in a permanent location since we'll be linking to it from Blender. Once extracted, you should see several blend files inside. The node groups file contains all the geometry node modifiers. This is the core file where every tool is stored and linked from. Storing the node groups separately should make future updates easier for all of us. The assets file has all the objects, materials, and prefabs ready to use. All the node groups used here are linked from the previous file. You can find all the textures in the texture folder that comes with the files. This text file is where your asset catalogs are stored. The startup scenes contain the most commonly needed elements, already connected together and ready to be used. The last part is the tutorial blend file. I'll talk about that a bit later. What's important is to not move or rename anything inside this folder. All the files use relative paths and are interconnected, so if you move things around, it'll break and the libraries will need to be relocated in the respective files. You can move the entire folder if you need to, just keep everything inside it as is. Before we continue, if you're completely new to Blender, there's some foundational knowledge you'll need to use these tools and follow along with the tutorials. I've put together a list of quality tutorials covering the absolute basics in Blender. These videos won't teach you everything overnight, but they'll give you a solid starting point and help you understand what areas to dive deeper into. All right, now let's set this up in Blender. Open Blender and go to Edit Preferences, then switch over to the File Paths tab. Click the plus button to add a new asset library, navigate to where you extracted your Track Tools folder, select the entire folder, and hit Add Asset Library. Now if you open your asset browser, you should see all the Track Tools assets available. And the exact number depends on which pack you purchased, but they should all be there and ready to use. You can now drag and drop any assets from the asset browser into your scene. While this seems like the perfect workflow, it can actually get messy pretty fast. When you append multiple prefabs, you end up duplicating node groups, objects, and materials that are assigned in the modifiers. Depending on what you're working on, this might not be a problem. But for game asset creation in general, keeping your scenes well organized with proper naming is crucial. Linking partially solves this, but then you lose direct access to everything that's linked and the file structure can get confusing when you're working with modifiers. That's where the Asset Browser Link add-on comes in. It was specifically designed to handle these issues and keep your workflow cleaner. To install it, just drag and drop the zip file from your downloads folder into Blender and hit OK. These buttons should appear at the top of your Asset Browser tab. You can import any asset with a single button and all those previous issues are solved automatically. All node groups in the modifiers are linked from the node groups file. All materials are local. Any objects assigned in modifiers are placed in a new track assets collection. Everything is smartly reused with each new imported asset. You can choose whether the imported asset is placed at the 3D cursor or at its original location from the source file. The Swap Modifiers button will replace the modifier stack on the selected object with the modifiers from the selected asset. This is really useful for quickly cycling through different setups and seeing how they work with your curve. The Swap Model button simply swaps all objects selected in the scene with a single selected asset. The Realize and Mesh button goes through all modifiers in the stack on all selected objects and enables any Realize instances switches that it finds, then converts everything to Mesh, applying the modifiers. 
The last cool thing you can do with this add-on is import an entire collection hierarchy with all the objects connected together and ready to be used. This is perfect for starting new projects. You just throw in one of the startup scenes and you have the base setup ready in a few clicks. You can swap the modifiers on the objects and all the modifier relations between the objects will be preserved. Let's now talk about the tutorial blend file. As you can see, I'm not the best at formatting documents, mainly because most of the time I work with this, which really shows in how this document turned out. I suggest you read through the general information at least once before jumping into the tools section. There's some basic info about the file, then some tips and tricks for working with Blender modifiers, followed by an explanation of the core concept behind track tools. If you're not 100% sure what a Blender modifier is, you really want to pause here and go figure that out. Easy for Gazi, it's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a f fairy dust. It doesn't exist. It's never landed. It is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. It, it's not fucking real. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> this knowledge is essential for working with my tools, as they're nothing more than a bunch of interconnected modifiers. There's also a section explaining some of the inputs that appear across multiple modifiers and one that covers the necessary steps before exporting your results. All the tools are explained in their respective sections. If you're having performance issues, you can disable the collections for the sections you're not using. All the descriptions are in a separate collection so they don't get disabled with the rest, which isn't perfect, but it doesn't really affect performance and it makes editing this file a lot easier for me. If you're using the free or basic pack, some sections will be empty, pointing you to the respective pack that's needed for them. There are no steps to follow, it's more of an overview of all the inputs, features, and relationships between the modifiers. As you follow along, make sure to check the objects in edit mode and look through the modifier stacks to better understand what's happening. When you're not sure what an input does, simply try changing the value and see what happens. I suggest you read through this file multiple times to really understand the connections between the parts. What's not included in the tutorial file is a step-by-step -step guide on how to start creating your first track. I'll show you that in the very next video that I'm starting to work on right after dropping this one. Now if you want to upgrade your project file, there's a migration process you need to go through. I've created a Python script that automates most of the work, but there are some things you'll need to fix manually afterward. Before we start, and this is really important, make a backup of your project file. I'll use this modified version of the old startup scene as an example. First, download the migration script file from my Discord. Open your Track Tools v2 project in Blender, switch to the scripting workspace, and drag the Python file into the text window. Click Run Script, and the migration button will appear in the end panel. You'll see two sections one for modifiers and one for materials. The materials weren't changed too much, but they were all adjusted to work with Fluffy's new exporter add-on. If you want to upgrade them, click Migrate Materials and select your new asset file. This will scan your entire file for materials, both on objects and in modifiers, and replace them with the new versions. Click Migrate Modifiers and select your file with the new node groups. The script will go through and replace all the old node groups with the new versions. Most of your settings will transfer automatically, and all the new inputs will be set to default values. Now, here's where it gets important. There are some things the script can't migrate automatically because the logic changed too much between versions. First, the terrain setup. The quick grid modifier, which used to be called triangle grid, now works differently. The material input is gone, so it uses whatever material is assigned to your terrain object. Make sure your terrain has proper UV mapping set up. The script sets the face size to 20 meters by default, but you might need to adjust that. The terrain geometry modifier also has new subdivision logic. The script sets up three ranges, 50, 20, and 10 meters, but you should review these settings and adjust them based on your project. Make sure you understand the difference between the old and the new system before setting up your terrain. Second, UV settings. The UV logic changed significantly in the new version. The old UV control modifier was replaced with a UV control panel in each modifier separately. The scaling logic changed a bit too to be more unified across all the tools. You need to go through all your modifiers and recreate your UV settings manually. 
third, bridges and tunnels. These got major changes and need complete reconfiguration. Make sure to check the changes before this step, as there are some functions in the old version that aren't part of the new one anymore. The tutorial file explains all the new features and logic in detail, so make sure to check that out when you're rebuilding your setups. If you run into issues, hop into the Discord, I'm there to help. Oh, and there's one more thing included, the Track Tools AC Exporter add-on. To install it, just drag and drop the zip file into Blender like we did with the Link add-on. Just a heads up, this add-on wasn't updated for v2.1 and I'm not entirely sure if it still works properly with the new version. I'll be testing it and updating it if needed. The tutorial file has some info on how it works, but honestly, with Fluffy's new exporter now available, this one might become obsolete. We'll see where it goes from here. Speaking of that, Fluffy just released the first version of his Aceto Corsa exporter add-on. It's a huge step up from the old workflow and makes exporting everything way more streamlined. If you're creating content for Aceto, definitely check it out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.